Hey guys, I've been obsessed with these anime text videos, and I noticed that there wasn't enough for Boku no Hero Academia, especially for Baku Deku, and I just had to change that. Before we get started though, I want to give a little warning. Even though I didn't go into any details, I feel like I should give a trigger warning for slight mentions of suicide. There is dialogue alluding to it, so please be mindful of that. Other than that I hope you enjoy my video. Midoriya groggily opened his eyes to a ping from his phone. Eyes landing on the clock on his desk, he groaned realizing it was 1am. Why is someone messaging me this late? Curiosity tapping at the back of his mind, he gave in. Squinting from the sudden brightness, he checked his notifications, and bolted up, the lingering fatigue gone. Hey, Izu baby. Can I go to your dorm? Midoriya stared at his phone intently. Something was definitely off. Bakugo has never asked if he could come over in the months they've been dating. He always just showed up. I wonder what happened to have him up past his bedtime. Brows furrowing, Midoriya replied trying to shake off the worry that slowly crept up in his stomach. Of course you can catch on. You're always welcome smiling face with hearts. Be there in ten. Okay smile. Locking his phone and stretching, Midoriya got out of bed and threw on one of the many hoodies that he, borrowed, from his boyfriend. A puff of Bakugo's scent tickled Midoriya's nose, and he inhaled deeply, smiling to himself. Midoriya quickly went down to the common room, deciding to get some chamomile tea for him and his boyfriend. Hopefully this helps. Midoriya noticed Bakugo walking towards him as he got to his door. Smiling sleepily he raised one of the mugs. I thought that maybe, you'd want some chamomile tea. Yeah, thanks. Once Midoriya placed, both mugs on the coasters of his nightstand, he plopped on the bed. He spread his arms out, and looked expectedly at the taller male, who immediately accepted the invitation. So, what's up? This is the first time you actually, asked, to come over. You usually just show up. Bakugo's body was tense, anxiety clearly radiating off of him. Noticing his behavior, Midoriya gently started playing with the blonde's hair. Take your time Kachan, there's no rush. Bakugo let out a shaky breath, not realizing he'd been holding it, and looked at his boyfriend's face. Hands stilling, Midoriya's breath hitched, as he peered at his boyfriend, who wore a pained expression and tears that threatened to spill. I, I, I had a nightmare about the shit I had said to you, when we were brats in middle school. Bakugo whispered faintly, doing nothing to hide the crack in his voice, as he tried to control his breathing. Realizing which memory Bakugo had referred to, Midoriya stayed quiet, as he started playing with Bakugo's hair again, a reassuring gesture to continue. But in the nightmare you actually, the words got stuck in Bakugo's throat, his body shuddered at the memory. Shish, it's okay, I know what you mean. You don't have to force it out. I tried to get to you, to stop you. I tried to do something, anything, but my body refused to move. I know you tried everything you could. Midoriya tried to reassure him, but Bakugo just chuckled bitterly. Not everything, because next thing I knew, it was too late. Then I woke up. Bakugo clenched his jaw, tears spilling. I couldn't do anything, and just watched you fall. He spoke softly, almost at a whisper. I was so fucking terrified when I woke up. I thought I lost you. Midoriya's heart broke as he watched Bakugo break down. The blonde spewing strings of curses and choked out sobs. Shish. I'm right here Katsuki. It didn't happen. I'm alive. I didn't leave you. The smaller male slowly rocked his boyfriend back and forth, as Bakugo cried. Hey, oh, 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 oh. 
Feel better. Yeah. Bakugo's voice was hoarse. Midoriya handed the now cold tea to Bakugo. Thanks. Sorry about all that. Bakugo cleared his throat awkwardly. Midoriya set down their mugs, and positioned himself to face Bakugo, and grabbed his hands. He stared into Bakugo's eyes intensely. It's okay Kachan, you don't need to apologize for expressing your emotions, ever. I'll always be there for you. Midoriya squeezed the larger male's hands, eyes full of love. Bakugo let out a shaky breath, and squeezed back. I don't know whose life I saved, in my previous life, to have you by my side, because I really don't deserve you. Kachan, I know I don't say it often. But I do love you. I've loved you for so long. You deserve so much more than me, and I know it's selfish but I'm not letting you go. Bakugo placed his calloused hands on Midoriya's cheeks, swiping at the tears falling. I'm going to prove that I deserve to be by your side. You already have Kachan. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Midoriya leaned into his lover's touch, nuzzling his hands. Stay by my side. Midoriya kissed one of Bakugo's hands. As long as you keep giving me your love and attention. Before Midoriya could kiss the other hand, Bakugo pulled him in, placing a chaste kiss onto his lips. Midoriya looked up at Bakugo, and giggled. Like that? Hmm, nope. Not enough. Midoriya shook his head, eyes glinting as he looked at Bakugo. Midoriya then closed his eyes, and waited expectantly. Bakugo chuckled. He flicked the freckled boy's forehead, before laying down, pulling Midoriya down on top of him. Kachan. Midoriya opened his eyes and whined, rubbing his forehead. Shut up nerd, it's already three. We gotta sleep. Fine. Pouting, Midoriya huffed, before burying his face into Bakugo's chest. Bakugo pulled him closer, hugging tightly. I love you, Izuku. Midoriya felt Bakugo plant a kiss on top of his head. Midoriya smiled, before slipping into a deep slumber.